So hello everyone. This is chapter um, five workflow. Um, this chapter is uh, is what was what is called um, the tool, the tool will give you the tool for make better development life cycle and um, showing you what you could use uh, in terms of uh, the process, the development process. Um, the debugging skills and other stuff. Um, so the objectives. Um, let's see the objective. Yeah, the objective is to help you improve your three important shiny workflows. So you have the development cycle, the debug cycle, or the deb debugging shiny apps in general, and learn how to write a self-contained reprex. Uh, which is short for uh, reproducible examples. And um, that's how we could ask for help uh, if you if you start getting stuck. So these are, uh, I think we know like most of this the the, um, the content of the uh, of this of this uh, chapter, but we'll dive deeper into the how and what is recommended and what's not. And that's it. Um, so why workflow? Um, so uh, Hadley call it his secret power. Uh, his secret power is one of the reasons that he uses this kind of workflow that is described in this chapter. Uh, it's make it better, and it, uh, and it's, he encourages us to, to do the same. Uh, so workflow makes the process of writing shiny apps more enjoyable, and helps your skills improve more quickly. That's, uh, yeah, that's what they talk about. Um, let's see this, yeah, this, uh, this diagram. So this have workflow, have three, three main stuff that we talk, we talk about, the, develop, the development cycle, debug cycle, and um, uh, look for help. Uh, the, de the development cycle, we'll see that you can create an app and make a changes and experiment quickly. Uh, if something goes wrong, then, then we go to the, the debug cycle. Uh, what's, what's gone wrong, you investigate and then try to fix it. If you stuck again, after you try to fix it by yourself, you go to the look for help and write a good reflex, which is a minimal code. A snippet of code that you send it for someone and to, to, to get to get help and you should like they have specifics uh to how to write the the, the request we'll go into just into the details when we uh, in soon soon so um this is uh the workflow now let's go into the development workflow so why we talking about this development workflow, uh, like um, it's allowed to reduce the time between the making a change and seeing the outcome. Since we are experimenting all based on this uh, development workflow. So it's really minimizing the time. Uh, and the faster you can iterate and experiment, the faster you will become a better shiny developer. Now this talks, this is what we, we were talking about um, uh, uh, before we begin the recording, uh, which is how you could rapidly have this kind of a prototype for, for your clients or for yourself that really had this kind of uh, describing all the requirements, um, having this graph uh, designs a great system that we want or where it is what. Um, and what's the styling, what's the branding, what's uh, all this kind of stuff. Um, so it, when you have this, when you refine this development workflow, you will become better at this these things by default. Um, so two main workflow to optimize here, uh, creating apps for the first time and making changes, changes and experimenting with the result faster. Uh, yeah, so it's an iterative cycle, as I said, and the, the more quick you have this prototype that you showcase your uh, your use case or the, the business logic or something like that, uh, the more quicker you do that, 
you or you build that, the more quicker you will gain, uh, you will reach the goal of having this product fulfilled or requirement fulfilled. Um, since the more you type, the, the more quicker you have this done. Um, now you could experiment with it and you could now um, ask your client for what, what the, they want to change and iterate over it. Um, so pretty important to have this creating apps very quickly and then iterate over it by time. Okay. So the creating app parts. So for every uh, every shiny app has the same six lines of code. We talked about these two things that exist in every shiny app, which is the UI part and the server part. And the second, the third thing is just the shiny app uh, functions that uses this UI and server. Um, so if uh, if you type in shiny R in app dot, dot R. Uh, and you'd see the prompt insert and snippet. Um, let's see it in the Visual Studio Code. Uh, if it's where it's working, it's shiny. Yeah. So you see this is snippet. The second one is what we talked about. It is the, the structure that you could pretty quickly just say. You want this snippet, and it will be on your hand. So it's it's in the it's here. Uh, so let's go up and try it here. And that's it. Just in one click, the the sensor or the 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 autocomplete will give you this structure and you can you now begin writing your UI part and server part, what is having the lot what is the logic that's happening in the UI and so on and so forth. Um, okay, so if you are using the R Studio you can create shiny web application project very easily, a new project, new directory, shiny web shiny web application. Let's let's try it pretty quickly. File new projects. Yeah, save it. Okay. Yeah. Now here you see this new projects. Uh, let's go back. Uh, there is a new shiny application and another directory and so on and so forth. Let's cancel it. Uh, and go from there. So seeing your, your changes faster. At most, you would create a few apps a day, but you will run apps hundreds of times. So mastering the development workflow is particularly important for this kind of use case. Uh, avoid clicking the run app button. Use the, uh, short, the shortcut, which is control shift enter, command or command shift enter it's our numbers. Now, um, let's see what he is talking about here. He's talking about that if you, for example, I'm running here this one, this, and delete this. Okay. So every time you run this, okay. Oh yeah, I uh, I was trying to debug. Let's run it again. You have shiny in line thirteen. Yeah. Yeah. Again, see it. Uh, okay, no, nothing here. Now it's run the app. Yeah. So every time we just running the app, you will see 
this reload app, like the run app to transfer to the real app. And um, let's see, yeah. Um, for, so for you to just press every time you make changes, press every time you make changes, this is like pretty repetitive work. And um, we, as people that use the computer or, or laptop or all the time we have this technical uh, meeting, we we uh, we pre we prefer using the the keyboards and the mouse because it's very quicker and having this uh, will make it faster to develop for for development. So shift shift control what is it called uh, shift control yeah enter shift control enter and it will open now again shift control enter again it's refreshed that's it. So you make the changes. Um, for example, what is your country? And you click enter and I have, yeah, this is a county, so it's, it's also counts. So yeah, that's it. So this is a recommendation from the book. Uh, just use this, uh, use the keyboard, not run the run app button. Uh, so turn auto loader on and run the app in the background as described here. So let's see. Uh, okay, starting the app in run R. Oh yeah, here. Maybe I viewer and yeah, it's, it's opening on, in it on the viewer, not the window, and make it live. Um, yeah, we could do you, we could do it viewer. Let's see, we can do it. Yeah, this, it has to be. Is this in terminal or in console? I think it's. Oh, yeah. So let's open it by force. Something like that. That's right. There is your not find this option. Yeah, I think viewer. this option is also in the menu for run app. Here? Yeah, if you look in the menu, there's an option to in background job. In the background job. And now yeah and then you, and then you can change the option to to output it into the viewer as well oh yeah right run in the viewer oh yeah yeah so it's instead of our, our console in the background and then you change the where is it run in the window new window or your tab so here yeah. you run you see it in here we go yeah, so I, I'm just yeah. Those instructions were a little a little confusing. I was looking at that last night, and uh, yeah, just yeah. those two boxes there will 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 get kind of get you the same same thing. Yeah, it's it will it will be the same, uh, and I think. But again, here you do you do you basically do the same, the same stuff. Uh, just command line and enter uh, to to lead on it. Um, but what if I did that? To not reload by itself, so it's not a reloader. So I don't know why it's called a reloader. Uh, 
well, option. Yeah, yeah. yeah you option. have to run that options line. I mean, you could do that in, in your app itself, right? And I think as long as you do that, then it would. Anytime yeah. you would make a change, it would it would accommodate it at least. Is that upon save or is that automatically? I can't remember. I think it's it's automatically, right? Yeah, shiny setting shot the shiny at the option to true. This one, okay. Yeah, but I think yeah that that option it's, itself would just get you there, wouldn't it? Which one? But yeah, the, that one you've highlighted. Yeah. Um, I think I I let's see. Um, where is it? Let's try it and see. First of all. Okay. Change it. Save. Yeah, it's working. Yeah. So yeah, this this option you could use like that. I think is there is a way for this without code done be done be without code. Don't know if it's it should be uh because this reloader thing is exists in Python by default, so I don't have to write code for it. Um but yeah, you could see it after a lot. Let's continue. I'll go back. Okay. Yes. So yeah, seeing your change it faster. Uh, give faster workflow, write a command, control S to save. Yeah, that's what we did it basically. And this advantage is harder to debug because the app is running in a separate process. Oh yeah, that's that's why it's a disadvantage. Yeah, it's a separate process, um, which is different than Python. It's, it's running the, on the same process, so it's, uh, I don't know why it's, this is the case, but yeah. Bigger apps, interactive testing, automated, automated testing, we will talk about in chapter 21. And the demo starting an app as a local job, we said that. Um, Controlling the view, we said we already said that. Uh, we just this is describe what we have done. Uh, okay, debugging an eight line app. What could possibly go wrong? The process of systematically comparing your expectation to reality until you find the mismatch. This is debugging. Um, or the the words of how had you become. Um, the meaning of the debug. Uh, so something will go wrong, definitely. Yeah, so it's so since we have built applications and we dealing with code, it's it's different and it's definitely like it's impossible to not get things wrong. So um, that's the way of, of, of the things going. So um, unless it's like we have now AI and this kind of a generative model that do do like uh, auto correcting for you by by automated by automation. Um, so yeah, I see a lot of cool stuff that done that by that. But since we are just using the simple stuff, simple workflow, simple uh, debugging skills, we will have to deal with this uh, by by our hands. So it takes years of experience to write code that works the first time. So we need a robust workflow for the identifying and fixing mistakes. Specific focus of three debugging challenges in Shiny App. Uh, the three challenges is you get an expected, unexpected error. This is the easiest one. So it's getting you as giving you a trace back where the error is and what is the root cause. The info that points to where the error occurred and it will give you the interactive debugger if you have this uh, we'll see the interactive debugger in action uh, but we will use this active debugger to um, see oh yeah uh, so let's see uh, yeah we will we, we'll use it to um, make like a pause in time when uh, when a code is running. So we'll see how this, this is done. And you don't get any errors. 
So when you don't get any errors in this case, so if you have an expected error, that's okay. That's already been done for you and giving you a trace back to, to know the, uh, the point, uh, the source of the error itself. So if you don't get any errors, but uh, you, you, you know that there's, there is an error in the, in the data itself and, or in somewhere, uh, the solution is to use this the active deb interactive debugger. And you basically have these points. Let's go into the active debugger since we are talking about it now. Um, so if, for example, if you have this, uh, this red circle, which say, say, say to uh, the R uh, studio, please like, when you are executing this app, just pause at this line, pause the execution for, for a minute and give me what is uh, what is happening in this kind in this time frame. Um, so if we tried this right, uh, let's close uh, the app here. Yeah, this now it's working. Okay, okay, so I think it's in this here. Let's try it on the still on the yeah, okay. So now you see, uh, this is this uh, the the red circle turned into the green arrow, this green arrow pointing to where is the code uh, poses uh, or execution poses now. Uh, so if you go to if we, uh, we have this kind of um, menu that uh, that we basically control the the flow of debugging or the flow of execution. So we could continue execution until the next breakpoint or uh, this execute the remainder of current function or loop. So basically put, say to it that continue working uh, on this loop or this function until it's finished. Um, and this one is very important, which is tip into the current function call. If we do it here, you will see that we there is you see here in the environment panel uh, we have values we have stuff that have going on in the inside the function base zero uh, so this is the name of the function and we have collapse we have recycle zero uh, it's uh, this recycle stuff uh, is a logical vector and uh, collapse is null, so I don't know it's what is what is it exactly. Uh, but yeah, you could see like details of the function itself when you use this debugger. Um, so let's go back. I think uh, let's continue. Okay, was it finished? Yeah, exiting from. Now it's working, so let's close it and try it again. Again, it's poses. Now let's go into try this uh, next. So this next line, you say to it, just skip this line and go to the another uh, the, 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 the second line. Now this actually does not um get over this one or does it like so it's it's still working yeah it's a shiny app is working yeah so it's the execution is done so basically the next line yeah if this is the end of the function or the end of the call it will just uh, continue execution until uh, it finds another breakpoint, or it, uh, uh, or it, uh, it will uh, continue continue the app as as a whole.
So, uh, I think I want to try it here. For example, this, let's say it here, okay? And run the app and see, okay? Okay, so we have an output and input. Uh, this is, this line is 37 is what, what we are aiming for. Now let's go into the next line. Okay, now it's in the next line is, which is like the histogram. And we could like dig deeper into the histogram itself, function, histogram function, how, what is done behind the scene. So we see here, this is the use method that we are using and um, the value Rn, which is the value that we are passing through to, to, the, to the histogram. If, if we, uh, you see that it's, it's value here, it's printed out in the console. So yeah, it's, it's just for you to see what is happening behind the scene, what is R is doing, or assigning what to what, to which, to which variable and uh, based on that, you have the decision or see what is what is the error if, if it's error in the data itself or in the function that you have built yourself. So yeah, that's debugging in the nutshell. And of course, you could stop the execution uh, and exit the byte, the debug mode with this. All of this, I think they have uh, shortcuts. I don't know if you mentioned the shortcut, but uh, I prefer using the debugger itself. Uh, as a menu. So yeah, uh, this is, uh, yeah, so we talked about the first challenge, which is unexpected error. We know that how to deal with that. Uh, we don't get any errors. Now we have, we have, we know how to do, uh, use the interactive debugger for that. Um, now, all the values are correct, but they are not updated when you expect. So this is the most challenging one because it is basically, it says that the problem is, uh, is you understanding how Shiny works, not um, not the, the code itself, it's a code is will work. Uh, but the interactivity part maybe have the problem, a problem and you, are, you don't understand it. That's why you are expecting something, but you, you don't get that expectation. Uh, so yeah, it's unique to Shiny. So it, since it exists in just uh, the activity or uh, something, some some kind of mechanism that's used uh, in a shiny ecosystem. So it's therefore it's unique to shine. Uh, you can take advantage of existing R debugging skills since it's not logical or uh, something of uh, like uh, can you can get get by used but by, by this uh, the two other challenges, which is. Uh, this is the most normal. Most of the error will be this two, those two things. Uh, then uh, you will not take advantage of your R debugging skills. Now you have to do other stuff. I think we will talk about the debugging of the activity after all. So yeah, let's go on. And yeah, so in R, every error in, is accomplished by a trace back or a call stack which is literally traces back uh, through the sequence of calls to lead the error. Um, so basically it's like a stack of, uh, but a stack of, of function calls. And it sees this main function, the call one, call two, call three, call four, and all of them are stacked uh, on, top of, on top of these trousers. Uh, and the, pro the function itself in the traceback is printed in the reverse order. So if you want a source, you will give uh, you will go to um uh the last uh, the last one um that's which is uh, pinpoint the location of an error um example for that is this uh, ex uh like we have a function x function function called g function called x and the function that do this this h f and g uh, uh is uses um yeah g is used h and f is uses g and if you run f now you'll see that it, it reprint for now to generate an error this we will do that 
uh, we will pass through F um, and character. So when you, you try to uh, do the numeric, op numeric operation or binary operation on uh, on this character, it will be have it will have error. So it will say error in the function that um, the result of X, like calling back this H function, which is this code, this particular set of code. Um, so the trace back is shown below. Uh, the top of the stack point to an error. Uh, if we see, I, I don't see the trace back. Oh yeah, so this trace back function is doing this. Um, flipping the trace back shows a better sequence. The sequence better, yeah, yeah. So the top of the sequence points to an error, to an error location. Uh, shows the sequence calls that lead the error. Uh, okay. So yeah, the the error itself we can be we can we can introduce it. Uh, like, let's see. Let's try to give this a number. Let's see. Oh yeah, best is taking the number. Uh, let's try this with an. I'm not trying to make it uh, like. Okay. Could not find this function. Now, this is an error. Uh, and this is not, we could see that it's, there is no trace back here, but or, or the trace back itself here, uh, as you see. So what it what it's saying is this run app is should be like the first one that's been executed. So just reverse the order and you see the the line that uh, or the, the source of it. So here the source is the first one, which is the hist function, which is this one that we are, that we try to uh, uh, have it error, an error in it. Um, so yeah, that's what he, what he talked about. Uh, top of the stack points to an, the, the error itself, which is here, is the top of the stack. So now, um, yeah, I think this is here. If anyone have any uh, question, please. Um, say it. Um, okay. You can't use traceback in Shiny. So this traceback function that you talked about before, we, where we could sh show this. Uh, this. Uh, but it's automatically printed in Shiny traceback for you. So if you have an error that as we, we have seen, or I showed you here now, um, this is built in in Shiny. It doesn't have to do it manually like in R. In R, you have to do it manually with its respect function in the console and so, so, so on and so forth. But here with Shiny app, it's already built in functionality. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, three components to Shiny error stack. The first few calls start the app. Ignore anything before the first run app. This is just the setup code to get the app running. Um, second, some internal shiny code in charge of calling the reactive expression is where the problem is. So this run app, let's first see this run app. So sometimes you may see the other things before run app, ignore them. Since this, uh, the shiny error, it, it will be exist in the, in the, uh, in shiny, in, in the shiny itself, uh, not be before it or uh, or below it, below it. Um, so that's what we talked about here. Um, the second error could, you could face in the shiny uh, with some some internal shiny code in charge of calling the reactive expression. So this is the one that having the problem and code that you have written. The third one is code you have written. Yeah. So. This is what this is a mechanism of reactivity. If you 
don't know how to use Reactive, you will find this kind of errors happening more often. But uh, another error, which is your code that you use to run, or your you are code uh, that you use to render here, for example, render a plot, is having a problem in line 13. This is what is uh, uh, the traceback is saying to you. Um, so yeah, this could be uh, your understanding for reactivity, or your code, your 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 code is itself, or a code that doesn't relate it to shiny by by so mean, uh, but below it or after it. So this is three part components that you could see in our the C shiny apps control stack. Um, so yeah, fixing error interactive debugger. We see that um, uh, you, you have an undefined error trace back you want to figure. Use the interactive debugger to debug your code. Two ways to launch the debugger. Uh, yeah, this is um, the browser way, which is using it in the console. We don't use that. Uh, or by clicking uh, on the breakpoint as, as, as I showed you, uh, this red circle, which is best, better than uh, using a function or a code to do that. Um, so useful interactive debugger commands. This next step that we said, well, and this leave, which is a, in the execution or continuous execution, uh, N and C and Q to stop the debugging, which is terminate. This is the stop. And this is the commands uh, or shortcuts for using the interactive debugger uh, 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 menu that we we have seen before. Um, yeah. Now, going back to the reactivity, debugging the activity, we said that some of the the, the bugs or uh, the errors you have you will have is understanding the activity itself, and this is one of the hardest problems to debug because it's, it it does is it doesn't have this re, uh, error specific error for the code itself. So the code is running quick, uh, nice and fine, but it's what we have, what, what is done behind the scene is what is it having the problem. The logic that, is, that Shiny implemented is having the problem. So since there is misunderstanding or not knowing how the activity work behind the scene, this, this kind of bugs could happen more often. Um, so we need other tools. Uh, this is not introduced in the chapter. We talked about it more when we talk about the activity uh, chapters uh, in details. But for a beginners, on a beginner level, we will use this print function or a message function. So they recommend to use the message function for for this to. Um, uh, to use the standard error streamline out of stream instead of standard output. So this is um, a very basic thing that uh, we used back then in C and C++ and other languages where we have a streamline. I think it's also existing by some also, also uh, with a different name. But uh, the main idea is we, we identify something to to print it out into the screen or the command line, there's a command interface, uh, versus uh, doing the same thing, like also on outputting the same value or the same output, but with the standard error use case, uh, we add it to the log as an error. So when we have this into production, into production uh, and have the logs of the Shiny app, we would see the error uh, in the shiny app, uh, in the in the logs, uh, uh, when we see it, when we investigate about something. Um, so yeah, this is uh, this is why mess using message is recommended in the production. If you are doing start your stuff locally and just you just w want to have, uh, you could use also message for that. But uh, for some people, since the message is not like uh, verbose syntax. Print function is also existing in every part. Of, I think it's every language out there, uh, including Python, of course. Uh, so the name is coming to your mind, and you just use it um, to print stuff onto the screen and see where is 
what's happening where. Um, so yeah, so you could use this as a beginner to debug stuff in reactivity, see what is happening, is this is right, uh, is reactive is having circles, uh, like, or uh, it is like the value what is happening to it, it's showing the value or updating the value or not, and so on and so forth. Yeah, like many useful use cases you, uh, you could use in uh, with this print function or message function. Um, so yeah, I think now we could use uh, go to the second, third thing, which is looking for help. So this is reproducible examples. Uh, if you go into any uh, R community, I think it's in R shiny specifically, you will see this kind of notion that's called uh, reproducible example. Since we we want uh, people to help us uh, debug something, um, we we just package some code snippet and uh, send it to them and say, I have an error in this piece of code and help me figure out what's going on. Um, so if you can't debug the error, it's time to ask for help in Shiny community by creating this Ribex, Ribex, and. Uh, uh, a rebrex Arib is just an, some an R code that works uh, when you copy and paste it into an R session and uh, on another computer. So good rebrex makes it easy for others to help to help you debug the, your app. Um, below is an example of shiny rebrex. So how to make a rebrex? Now we create a single self-contained file like the app dot R file we have here. It have all the all the um, uh, all the code in one place, so uh, we load all the packages before we use it. So if you have this, uh, if you have other code, uh, logical logical stuff that you do in R itself, for example here uh, to just display something based on a calculation or you just run in a table or something. Um, you have to like have this data loaded uh, here, just for uh, for the other person that you're giving giving it your code to load the, the data, same data and use it in uh, to see the the, the result. Uh, so yeah, and test it by restarting the the, uh, the R refresh session. Yeah, potential problem is sharing your data, so that's why it's advisable to. Uh, use the built-in data stuff, the data sets, like MBG, um, and like construct an ex a working example uh, for your uh, error using this this uh, built-in data sets to not expose your own data set or sensitive information, and create a sample data set and illustrate the problem in uh, uh, in the chat. And use the subset. You could use also the subset data uh, with dbot. Uh, yeah. And you just like last re last resort is to provide the complete app. .r. This is what I was talking about. Uh, some people are doing doing that, and some some people are having this small snippet. And it's, it's better to have this small snippet so to not make to to confuse other the other person. To, to search for the code that you are uh, mentioning. Um, but yeah, uh, I think it's, uh, if, if it's small app, it will be fine to share the whole app to the R file. And, um, and the needed files using uh, the GitHub or zip file, uh, if you have out export ex external data sets or external files that you want to, uh, to, to include it, just zip it and send it to them or Upload it to GitHub and send it the 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 location of it or uh, the URL to the person. Uh, if reading data from the desk seems ir uh, irreducible part of the problem, yeah. Uh, so this has solved it. Make sure you use relative passes. Yeah, this is a common problem when you're sharing a URL or something that uses uh, your uh, uh, your data 
which is exists in your machine. So uh, and complete pass to it is not the same as a, uh, is, is not the same as a, the passes for for the other person. So it, uh, you basically give it a, a long location. So give it a relative pass, which is uses the own cell. Uh, again, you could use this in the code itself when you are designing the code. One of the common problems that we we are doing that uh, we did we give it a specific pass, really um, uh, not relative passes, uh, and that's called that uh, gives the other person errors where which is there is nothing in this. And he have to. He have of course, of course. He know how to how to do it. Like how he know how. Okay, I will change that. Uh, give give it the locations of my on my machine of the of this particular data set or CSV file or something. But you make it harder for them to quickly see the result and answer your questions. So that's why it's uh use this relative pass is very important, and. Format your code okay, again. Formatting, not formatting code, or uh, the code is messy code, uh, not formatted. The not formatted one, it, it will be harder for them to read it, and it will be uh, making make them slower to response. Uh, so use just the styler package if you adopt the tidyverse uh, style guide. Uh, this styler package will do will just format the code. Normally, I, I uh, in Python world, I would say in, in my case, I don't use. I I just use, for example, in this uh in this example, I use this in built in in the in the VS Code itself. You will see this format document, and by by doing that, it's just one click, and that's it. So it, this is formatted for me, and I don't need to recheck or something. So the same as we in R, but with this Styler uh, package, uh, and this is there is a guide for how to use it. So, yeah, the last one, last portion of this session is making a minimal regex. Yeah, it, it's it's just the common like specifics uh, or recommendation for you to to create a minimal regex. Uh, just trim out all the code that's okay. Like you don't have a problem with this code specifically, so just just include the part that you feel or you say you you saying or you by your debugging skill or investigation skill or uh, or you use the interactive debugger uh, or you use the print function or any any type of tool that you are using. If you find it okay and working now, just exclude that part and. Uh, Make it like only including the part that you think it's not working, uh, rather than forcing the potential helper to understand the entire app. Yeah, that's that's what I'm talking about. Uh, this process often lead to discover what the problem is, so you don't have to wait for uh, help for someone else. So yeah, it's he he talking about if you trimmed out all the code that is working. You'll definitely find a piece that is not working. Like by excluding other parts, the, the working part, you'll find the, the not working part. Yeah, that's simple. Uh, a good way to find error of code is to remove sections of code from your application piece by piece until you uh, until the problem goes away. So if the problem goes away, you see that okay, I since I deleted this, then this is a this is a problem. The problem is in this specific line or this specific call of function or this specific um, assignment for the variable or something. Um, so yeah, a good way for doing that is to just remove the section piece by piece, but intentionally. Um, if you rem if I rem if removing a particular piece of code makes the problem stop, it's uh, it's likely that the code is related to the problem. Yeah. Um, so this is an example of a bad regex. Uh, all the code, uh, all the needed packages are not in loaded. You have just tiny, uh, and that's it. The code is not styled. Uh, makes the code uneasy to help, making it uh, yeah. Uh, if you see here, you find this is 
uh, style uh, also here. And yeah, you you will find it. Not, he has to be to see the one liner thing and understand it more. Uh, other than just having this in one uh, uh, in one shot, he take a glimpse uh, on by using by using his eyes, he, he, he like see the problem and say say it to him. So yeah, this is uh, uh, example for a bad reflex. And remove the remove part of the code that's independent of the error. Yeah, this this is the way you I guess asking us to see where the error is. We have it assigned min and max variables. Yeah, yeah. This is an example of how to see where the error is. Um, I think we lost them. Can is anyone else hearing uh, Ahmed speak? Uh, no. Okay. Well, we're a good time to end, anyways. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that was that was uh, most of it here. Okay. Oh, he's yeah. It's like Derek just uh, dropped. I'll give him a minute to join though. Yeah. I found this trick to use uh, the browser using a click of a button and share it in the chat here and also share it there on the Slack channel. Uh. If you add this, uh, the button doesn't show up. Um, and if you click on the button after revealing it, through the console in the browser, then you can uh, start the browser and basically debug anything. Oh, sorry, guys. Oh, my internet works. Okay. Um, uh, okay. No problem. Uh, Amir was just, uh, he put something in the chat about uh, uh, just a, kind of a, a trick for debugging Shiny. So, yeah, I um, found this. Uh, Colin Fay uses this. He's the one who created the Golem package for the oh, yeah. production shiny apps. Interesting. I didn't know that. Um, let's let me like re share my screen. Um, okay. Okay. So yeah. Um, the new server calls and uh, okay. The example uses a relatively sophisticated shiny technique where the UI is generated in the server. Yeah, we'll talk about the this generation part of UI uh, afterwards, but. Uh, now let's focus on the, the example. But the U, the render UI doesn't use any reactive inputs, um, so it should work. Uh, this leads to a new UI that generates the error. Um, so yeah, let's let's skip that because I I don't follow it uh, right away. Um, I I just want this is since this this is the final one uh, final slide. Um, last time, uh, I said that we we could like see uh, a uh, a good example of um, similar stuff that happening in the in the shiny. So the app, the use case app <coughs> that uh, been introduced by Derek, uh, I I couldn't share it last time, so I will share it now, and we could see see the similarities. Um, so 
this is my shiny app. Now, this is uh before we go into the app itself, uh doing exploratory data analysis with uh Python basically are using like uh simple stuff that uh exists in the pandas library. So all the data analysis or all uh the data manipulation stuff basically we are using pandas for it and pandas now is having the version two and version two is using the pi arrow thing and this pi arrow which is say to you that um every other uh this is like a centralized interface for for us to 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 use memories and it makes uh pandas 2 or pandas version 2 run pretty pretty fast uh with just two lines of code you are like tripling or something like that in tripling the speed something like that um so yeah it's it's pretty useful package and we uh we we use it pretty often when you when you do if you if you like uh, like uh try some Python it will definitely go to Pandas somewhere. Um, so yeah, we uh, here we are doing the same stuff. Um, we just assigning the apps uh, data frames uh, using this uh, uh, the CSV file or TSV file, and uh, we read it uh, and see uh, and and giving like giving it like. Um, um, a filter or a group by or something like that. And this is a weighted average or the weighted sum. Um, and yeah, we are using that uh, to get our table. Uh, yeah, to get our table uh, um, table in the app itself. This one on this one and this one. Uh, this is the diagonal, this is the body part, this is the location and yeah. Uh, we use just pandas for it for this, uh, but yeah, this is normal data analysis stuff. And here I use this uh, plotly uh, express part, not the go part, um, graph object part. The graph object is more customizable. Uh, the the express is uh, it just for a quick quick things. Since this is a pretty simple example, this is uh, just we say this is a summary a summary data frame, and this is the age and weight, uh, and the color color by sex. So the weight is and uh, y axis, and the age is the x axis, and we have this uh, this interactive graph that we could like go more deeper and deeper into what is what this could mean. And we could also download it as a. Did we lose him again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, all right. Yeah, I think we we uh, call it a day. We are a bit over, so. Um, uh, it's un unfortunate that he he dropped, but I uh, thought it was a a, a good uh, good presentation today. So uh, thanks for joining, Mayor, and uh, we'll see you in a, a future discussion. Uh, thanks. I'm gonna try yeah. to stop in the chat. Yep. Yeah, oh, I hit end. Oh, okay. I think right. that I think that will work. Yeah. All right. See you later. Bye. We'll see you next week.